Hello everyone, welcome back to Jarga's Ranger Review. Because I still can't think of a better name. This time we'll be taking a look at episode 2 of Megaforce. He blasted me with science. And straight off from the get-go, that is a great name. And so the episode starts off with... What's his name? Uh, Troy the Red Ranger. I actually wrote their names down so I know who I'm talking about here. It's having a vision. Or something in his mind where one of the monsters is challenging him to battle and he refuses. Smart move since it was an illusion. Turns out he's in the middle of the science class. Now I really like how they're being consistent with the teacher subjects so far. Because he's obviously a throwback to like Miss Appleby back in the Mighty Morphin Zeo days. But whenever sh they showed her in class, it, it was anything. Just any random subject to make the episode about. But with him, he's pretty consistent, which is very good. So after class lets out, and a uh, Black Ranger, uh, Jake is trying to get with the Yellow Ranger, uh, Gia. And I have to say, so far, she's probably my favorite one I've seen. Just through the best Yellow Ranger we've had since probably Dino Thun. And really, she's pretty a serious type. We haven't seen a Yellow like that since back in Wild Forest with, I think it was, Alyssa. So that is a very good thing so far. And I need to come up with a more, better variety of words. And so the uh, War Star, I think they're keeping their name, is trying to figure out uh, how the best deal with taking out humans. They don't know anything, so they use the power of science to research best ways to attack. And in the meanwhile, the Blue Ranger, who is... what was his name? Uh, Noah is bringing back a scarf to the teacher, who apparently has a lot of conspiracy theories about UFOs and a Loch Ness Monster going on, which is a lot like Professor Phenomenus from back in In Space. It is very much like that because I can't take this guy seriously. And he's also just as enthusiastic at his pursuits. So another great throwback to the old days. Like a lot of this place is like Angel Grove. I mean, when he was having his little pop quiz, it he just took a nap. That would have never happened in anything past the Zeo. I can guarantee that. And so when they capture humans with uh, one monster that can look like a flying saucer. And of course, our yellow and black rangers see it and try to handle it on their own. But they call for help pretty quickly, of course. And when the other rangers do arrive, they have a very clean and efficient roll call. Because one problem I had with Gosager, and as well as Samurai, is that the scenes were awfully like too flashy or rushed together. Sometimes made it a bit hard to follow what was happening. So luckily it is very much addressed here, because it's, it has some flash to it, but it's not so much that it detracts from the action that's happening, which is all, which all proved pretty smoothly and clean. I mean, it didn't look like they were dancing choreography, but it just seemed natural and all, is what I'm saying. The one little thing I found interesting is between a bit of banter between the Noah and Jake, Gia interrupted them and they cut off their bromance. That's a line I never would have expected from Power Rangers. Shows that it really is a modern series, not just a big love letter to the old days. So anyway, after showing off their weapons, they take out the monster of the week. And of course, he grows big. So to handle this, they finally get to show off their zords. 
and Troy says some said they run off like our courage and our strength. No. The swords do have a power source. Usually, but they are related to that powers. But that just just made me laugh because of how silly that was. I mean, they're not like freaking gunmen from growing lager or anything. The one thing I couldn't make out is when you were calling them. They were either saying mechazords or megazords. Just for the individual swords, not the one that they're combining into. Because I don't know why would they would call that when they can just. S I mean, they're animal shapes, so they can just say that. Like the dragon sword or something. Well, one of them is a dragon shape. But that's just a, a minor nitpick. Another thing is, they're keeping the names of everything from a uh, Gosage, or everything is named Gose. But I don't think that should have been done since, you know, their Zordon figure is called Gose. But then again, the Zord's probably named after the Zordon, so it kind of fits, I guess. Yeah, but at least, but Zord had a better ring to it than Gosei Zords or something. They even kept the name of the Megazord and just named Gosei Great became Gosei Great Megazord. So, I really don't know what direction they're going there with. Don't know if it was a production issue or if they were just trying to reuse assets from the Sentai to bring in the fan who likes both series. Like me. So anyway, after they defeat the monster, Team remarks on how they work better as a team because two of them tried going on their own in the beginning. Yeah, but also the War Star guys actually don't take it too angrily. They're just saying we're gonna be careful and learn more in order to beat these humans. They're gonna be a tough battle. Which to me is rather reminiscent of the Machine Empire from Zeo. Though they don't seem like quite as laid back about it as Machine Empire. But, and they did seem serious about it. But still, it reminded a lot of them. So overall, this is a great follow up to the first episode. And so far, it's two for two for great episodes in Megaforce. And we are looking forward if they can keep this streak up. Especially after what happened with Samurai, I'm still a bit wary of how the series is going to end up being. Though I do think they'll do it pretty well since it's their 20th anniversary. And Power Rangers has always gone a bit for the extra mile on the anniversary season. Overall, if I would give a letter grade to this episode, I, I'd give it an A. It's very good and kept entertaining the whole way through. Not as good as the premiere episode, but that was a, it's actually a pretty tough act to follow, so it's a still good episode. And hopefully it can maintain this kind of quality or even greater as the season progresses. Well, that's all for this episode of Jargus Ranger Review. I hope you enjoyed watching, and I'll see you next week, everybody.